Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a registered nurse and the owner of Florida Training Academy. Um, in today's video, we're going to be reviewing 60 practice CNA exam questions and the rationales, but here's a kicker. I've never taken this exam before, and I want to see if you are smarter than a nurse educator. So we're going to work through these questions together. Um, if I do answer something incorrectly or if I say anything that is imperfect, remember to blame it on my brain and not my heart. Art. I will not be editing this video because this video is brought to you on behalf of Onaka Monique. Onaka sent a message this morning. Thank you for being a subscriber and said that we need more CNA practice exam questions. And so there you have it. If you're in Jacksonville, if you're in the state of Florida and you're looking for hands-on CNA prep, our website is www.fltraining.com. Not only do we provide the CNA exam prep courses, we have a workbook that you can purchase online. And then we do the CNA trainer and excuse me, CNA trainer, trainer, and CPR instructor training classes. So we're pretty much a one-stop shop for those who are either in entry-level positions or those who are in more advanced positions like doctors and nurses. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and start this exam. All right, and again, I have not seen this exam before, so um, hopefully um, I do well. <laughs> All right, question number one. The nurse aide is using an electric shaver to shave a client when it begins to spark and smoke. Which of the following actions should the nurse aide take? Call the nurse in charge. Finish shaving the client as quickly as possible. Use the roommate shaver to finish shaving the client. Unplug the shaver. And um, of course, we want to prevent a fire and to keep our client safe. So we're going to unplug the shaver. We can always go back and, you know, resume the shave later once we have better equipment. Question two, the nurse aide is caring for a client who has right-sided paralysis. Um, that means that either one side doesn't move at all or one side is extremely limited due to maybe an auto accident or an injury, or it also could have been due to stroke. And so the nurse aide should place the signaling device on the left side of the bed near the client's hand, on the right side of the bed near the client's hand, under the pillow at the foot of the bed. Well, we automatically know the last two are not the best options. You would not want to place the signaling device on the right side because your patient has right-sided paralysis. They would, they'd have to reach across their body in order to um, get the device. So the best answer is going to be the first option. And remember to stay until the end so that you can see what questions I answer correctly or incorrectly. Question number three, the nurse aide is preparing to lift a client using proper body mechanics. The nurse aide should. Remember, you always want to lift with your legs. You want to save your back. Keep both feet close together. Absolutely not. You want to have a wider stance whenever you're lifting. Lift with abdominal muscles. Nope, that is going to hurt. Bend knees and keep back straight. Hold the object away from your body. No, you don't. You want to have it closer to the center of gravity. So the best answer is going to be this third one. Question four, the nurse aide is caring for a client who needs to be transferred. The nursing care plan states transfer with a mechanical lift. However, the client is very agitated. To transfer the client, the nurse aide should. Look, my CNA babies, anytime you are using a mechanical lift, I don't care how short-staffed your uh, facility is, it always requires two people, okay? Whether the client is agitated or not, one person has their hands on the client and the other hand actually maneuvers the lift. And so let's see what our options are. The first, lift the client without the mechanical device. Well, that'll be going against the doctor's orders. It required a mechanical lift to transfer the resident. So that is not the option. The second, place the client in the lift. The third, get assistance to move the client. Fourth, keep wheels unlocked. Now, if you're transferring somebody, you're always going to have wheels locked, whether that's on the Hoyer lift, the bed, or the wheelchair. So the best answer is this third one. We're going to get assistance to move the client. Question number five, the nurse aide is assisting a client while eating. The client begins to choke and turn blue. That is a medical emergency. The nurse aide should immediately remove the client's food tray and go find the charge nurse or the nurse in charge. You will never leave a person who's at risk of injury alone. You're going to stay with that person and render aid, whether the aid is the abdominal thrust or if it's providing CPR if we're unable to clear their airway. 
All right, so we know the first one's not the answer. The second one says slap the client on the back until the food dislodges. Well, when you're hitting someone in the back, um, you actually make the food go further down. You do not promote it coming up and out. Call for assistance and perform the Heimlich maneuver, also referred to as abdominal thrust. Um, to me, that's the best answer. And number four says give the client a drink of water. You're not going to give someone water when they're turning blue. Um, and if they're aspirating, you don't want to give water because the water can follow the path of the food and go into their lungs. So the best answer is going to be the third one, call for assistance. Question number six, the nurse says providing evening care for a client with a full set of dentures. Proper procedure requires that the dentures be placed in the client's bathroom on the sink, in tissue on the bedside stand, under the client's pillow, in a denture cup with the client's name on it. Well, we know those dentures are super expensive. And if a person doesn't chew their food properly, they're gonna be at risk of aspiration. So we wanna keep those dentures safe. And the best option is gonna be this fourth option. Put those dentures in a cup and make sure we um, have it labeled properly. Question seven, what type of fire can be put out with water? Electrical. Water and electricity do not mix. Grease, absolutely not. You're gonna make the fire worse. Paper, possibly. Chemical, we don't know what chemical. And some chemicals react with water. And so the best answer for this option is going to be paper. However, in your facilities, they should be teaching you PASS. And that's what that's the acronym that we use whenever we're talking about fire safety and how to use a fire extinguisher. If you remember what PASS stands for, I want you to go ahead and put it in the comments. All right, I'll give you a few moments. It's pull, you want to pull the pin, you want to aim towards the base of the fire, you want to squeeze the nozzle, and you want to spray from side to side. And that's how we're going to extinguish a fire using a fire extinguisher. Question number eight, the nurse there is responsible for all of the following fire prevention measures except. So which one is not your responsibility? Taking cigarettes and matches away from all clients and visitors. Usually if the answer option has all in it, I automatically know that um, that is not something that we would normally do because care is individualized. And so I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards this first one, but let's keep breathing. Um, you would not be expected to be aware of the locations of fire extinguishers. Well, that's not true. You would not be expected to report all damaged wiring. That's not true. And you would not be expected to perform um, or participate in fire drills. Well, the last three are things that you're supposed to do. And so since this question asks what you're not supposed to do, it asks for the exception. The exception is this first one. And so when you're taking your CNA examination, do not assume that you're working in a hospital that has a smoke free or, or no smoking policy. Um, you're taking care of an adult resident, and that could be someone who is homebound, someone who lives in an assisted living facility. And yes, in some of these facilities, the clients and the visitors are actually allowed to smoke. Question number nine, the nurse is preparing to help a client walk from the bed to a wheelchair. Which of the following should the nurse aide put on the client's feet? Socks or stockings only? That's a guaranteed way to have your patient slide to the floor. So absolutely not. Cloth sold slippers. No. Rubber sold slippers or shoes. More than likely that is correct. Nothing. <laughs> absolutely not. You're not going to be walking your um, patients barefoot and you're not going to be walking in with anything except for something that has grippies or some type of rubber bottom and to help prevent a fall or a slide. So the best answer is this third one. Question 10, the nurse aide understands that the most important reason for using soap and water to clean, um, to clean the client's skin after elimination is to keep the client happy, prevent soiling of bed linen, remove feces and urine from the skin, keep the linen costs down. And of course, we know it's going to be the third one. Um, you want to keep your resident's clean, um, skin clean and dry. That's going to prevent infections. And it's also going to prevent skin breakdown, which could cause pressure sores. Question 11, the nurse aide, she refused to perform a task if the nurse aide has never been trained to do so. Bingo. <laughs> All right. So in your facilities, um, usually CNAs, I know in the real world, CNAs may train CNAs, but according to laws, nurses train CNAs, specifically RNs train CNAs. And so if you haven't been trained to do something, you're not supposed to be doing it. But let's read the others. Um, you should perform a task. You should um, you should refuse to perform a task if the client is difficult to deal with. 
if the client, um, if the nurse aide can find someone else to do it, um, if it's the end of your shift, you should refuse to perform a task. And so um, those are not the correct answers. You're going to refuse to perform a task if you have not been trained to do so. Ask your nurse to teach you. Question 12, before helping a client into a bath or a shower, the nurse aide should first check the temperature of the water, shampoo the client's hair, soak the client's feet, apply lotion or oil to the client's skin. The last one means that you're going to be putting a slippery um, substance on a patient's feet and then taking them into the shower or the tub. Well, that's a recipe for disaster. We're not going to do that. Um, you don't have to soak someone's feet before you give them a bath. You will not be shampooing everyone's hair during the bath or the shower. The safest option before you put a, cl a client into the shower or the bath, you want to check the temperature of the water first, and then you have the, the client actually check it second. Question 13, when taking a client's radial pulse, the nurse aide's fingertip should be placed on the client's chest, wrist, neck, elbow. And this is requiring for you to know where like the radial artery is. And so the radial artery is located in the wrist right beneath the thumb. And whenever you think about the radial pulse, um, you know, not the carotid pulse, carotid would be here. The radial pulse is here. If your patient's responding to you, you're not going to be feeling for their carotid pulse. This is when you think of this, think of CPR. So the radial pulse, you would hold it for one full minute. When you're taking a pulse, remember you cannot use your thumb to take a pulse because your thumb has its own pulse. And in theory, you'll be counting your own heart rate. So two or three fingers, wrist area, radial pulse. Question 14, a nurse aide reports directly to the nurse supervisor, physician, staff development, nurse administrator. All right, so we know that you report directly to a nurse, but I need you to understand the differences in these two types of nurses. All right, so the staff development nurse, I want you to think of your orientation when you were first hired um, to your facility. And there was a group of nurses within a room and they were teaching you skills, watching you perform hand hygiene. And so that person who's doing the training is the staff development nurse. If there's an issue on your floor, you're not going to be going to the trainer. You're going to be going to your nurse supervisor. Question 15, when communicating with a client's family, the nurse aide should listen to concerns and offer support, offer advice about the client's medical treatment, get involved in the family problems, share the latest facility gossip. All right, so the last two, absolutely no. And then um, you as a CNA, you don't give advice about medical treatment. You are not a physician. You'd be stepping outside of your scope of practice. The physicians advise about the medical treatment and they create a treatment plan, which the nurses and the CNAs follow. So the best option here is you're going to listen to the concerns and offer support. Question 16, the nurse aide is making an empty bed and notices that the side rail is broken. The nurse aide should wait for the next safety check to report the broken side rail. Report the broken side rail immediately. Tie the side rail in a raised position until it is fixed. Warn the client to be careful when getting back into the bed. Well, of course, it's not going to be the last one because this said it was an empty bed. And so we're going to go ahead and replace that bed before we ever put a client in the bed. And so the best response is going to be to report the broken side rail immediately. And you work with your nurse, your nurse um, so that we can get a new bed in that client's room. Question 17, the nurse that is caring for a client who becomes incontinent of urine right before dinner. And sometimes the CNAs don't understand the differences between incontinence and retention. If someone's retaining urine, then they're going to have bladder distension. They're going to have some lower abdominal pain. And that would be a medical reason for a nurse to insert a catheter. That is the opposite of incontinence. When someone's incontinent, they can't control their urine. They can't control their bowel movements. So they're wet. That's why they call them incontinent pads or incontinent briefs. It's, it's because the person has moisture down there. And so if a person is incontinent right before dinner, what do you think you should do as a nurse aide? Option first, excuse me, the first option says take the client to the dinner table and clean up after dinner. The second is clean the client and take to dinner as soon as possible. The third is tell the client not to eat until the client has cleaned and changed self. And lastly, insist that the client eat dinner in the room. But we're not going to be lazy and we're always going to prioritize patient care. So the best option is going to be clean the client and take the client to dinner as soon as possible. 
All right, so question number 18. The nurse aide notices that the client's radio cord is draped across a chair in order to reach the nearest outlet. The first thing the nurse aide should do is tell the client the radio is a safety hazard and take it away. Unplug the radio and ask the client not to use it. See if any changes can be made so that the radio can be plugged in safely. Take the radio to the activities department or activities room and tell the client to listen to it there. Where well, I want you to think about these clients. And if this client has a radio, more than likely they prefer that versus the TV. And so I want to keep this client happy so that they have some fulfillment and joy in life. I'm not going to take the radio away. I'm going to work to see what changes can be made um, so that the client can actually enjoy the radio. Maybe we need to maneuver some things in the room. Um, um, usually electrical um, extension cords are not allowed in your facilities, but we can find a way to allow this resident to keep their radio, even if it means we have to use like rechargeable batteries or something. So let's find a way to keep our clients happy. Question 19, the nurse aide is walking with a client who is confined to a wheelchair. When a facility fire alarm is activated, the client becomes excited from the noise. The nurse aide should. So anytime there's a fire, the acronym you need to know is RACE, R-A-C-E. R stands for rescue, A stands for alert or alarm, C stands for confined, and E stands for extinguish or exit the building. And so I want you to keep that in mind. We need to race because there's a fire. So are we going to push the wheelchair out of the hallway and carry somebody who's wheelchair bound out of the facility? Are we going to leave the client to search for help? Are we going to comfort the client while moving them to a safe place? Or are we going to lock the client's wheelchair and check the surrounding areas for smoke? Now, the only option that made that client safe is going to be the third option. And remember to race if there is a fire. 20, the nurse aide notices a client spill water on the floor in the hall. Another nurse aide, another client is walking down the hall. The nurse aide should. We're going to call the nurse, clean up the spill, call housekeeping, or leave the spill. Um, you saw it. Clients are in immediate risk of falling. I need for you to clean up that spill right away. We are not waiting for housekeeping, and you're not going to be calling a nurse about a spill. Question 21, for safety, when leaving a client alone in a room, the nurse aide should keep the door tightly closed, place the signaling device within the client's reach, apply a restraint to the client, leave the bed in the highest position. Well, the last two options are the exact opposite of what we're going to do. All right, we're never going to leave the bed in the highest position. You leave the bed in the lowest position. And we don't apply restraints just for the sake of applying restraints. A patient would have to be a danger to themselves or others. If a patient is falling or their fall risk, we don't restrain them. We can get a bed alarm. We can get a sitter. There are least restrictive ways to keep people safe. And plus, when you restrain someone, you actually increase their chances of injury because they're going to be fighting to get released. Right. And so the best answer is going to be place the signaling device within the client's reach. That way, even though they're in the room alone, if they need help, they can just call for assistance. Question 22, the nurse aide understands that physical restraints may be used to prevent client injury when staff is short at the family's request, at the roommate's request. All right, and so the best answer is going to be to prevent client injury and restraints require an order from a doctor and frequent reassessments. You'll be checking vital signs about every 15 minutes. And so if you restrain someone that's really serious, because again, the patient can harm him or herself just by trying to get out of the restraints. Question 23, the nurse aide is concerned about a client's care. Which of the following should the nurse aide speak to first? Another nurse aide, the nurse in charge, the director of nursing, the administrator. Well, your nurse in charge is responsible for that floor for that shift. And that's like your immediate, your, your most available nurse, charge nurse. The director of nursing is responsible for the entire floor 24-7, where even at nighttime, if there's an emergency that happens, there's going to be an email, a text, that director of nursing will have to address that when he or she returns. And so if there's an immediate need with your patient, you're going to um, actually notify the nurse who's right there with you, your nurse that's in charge. Question 24, the nurse aide is preparing to take a client's oral temperature. The nurse aide should place the thermometer in the rectum, place the thermometer under the arm, place the thermometer under the tongue, put lubricant on the thermometer. Well, that's just nasty. And the best option is going to be the third. 
Question 25, the nurse aide should understand that pressure ulcers can often be prevented if the client is placed in an incontinence brief, positioned with a pillow under the head, dressed in loosely fitting clothing, turned or repositioned every two hours. And of course, we have to reposition patients in order to decrease those pressure sores. And usually if you put someone in an incontinence brief, that moisture is still trapped against the skin. And that actually increases their chances of getting a bed sores, which is why a lot of your, um, a lot of your facilities either have a no diaper policy, a diaper free policy, or for women, they'll use like the Purex, which uh, will wick away the moisture. And for a male, they'll have like a condom catheter to drain the urine away um, from the peri area. Question 26, the nurse aide is caring for a client with hand tremors. The nurse aide should restrain the hand that has a tremor, assist the client with the activity of daily living as needed, Tell the client to stop shaking and control the tremors. Do everything for the client, all right? And so we're never going to do everything for a client. Our job is to rehabilitate them. And so even if a person has had a stroke on one side, you're going to encourage them to be as independent as possible for as long as possible. So their unaffected side will be the one that you encourage them to use and to comb their hair, et cetera. And so if you have a patient who has an inability on one side due to the tremors, you're going to assist them as needed, okay? Don't do everything for them. Question 27, the nurse aide is assisting the client in resolving grievances. The nurse aide should report the grievance to, a grievance, think of it like a complaint. The nurse aide should report the grievance to the doctor, the family, the administrator, or the nurse in charge. And we know that you know that answer, the nurse in charge. I hope you all are doing very well on this test. We're almost halfway done. And at the end, you'll see if you are smarter than the nurse evaluator. Again, my name is Eunice Mathis with Florida Train Academy, and we're on question number 28. 28, when providing care to a client, the nurse aide should always, or excuse me, should avoid unnecessary exposure of the client to protect the client's right to privacy, confidentiality, personal choice, personal hygiene. All right. And so this one is going to be the right to privacy. For example, let's say that your um, client vomited and you're going to be doing a partial bed bath. You're going to clean his face, his chest, and maybe change his gown. Well, while you're in the process of cleaning, you don't remove the entire gown and leave the body fully exposed. You would only expose the part that you're going to be washing and just in moderation, maybe put a towel or a bath towel on top of the resident to prevent the overexposure. So the best answer for this one would be the first option. 29, the nurse aide um, should understand that the female perineum, um, think of the genital area, should be cleansed from front to back without soap, with a disinfectant, ouch, from back to front. And so the best answer is going to be from front to back. You're always cleaning from the clean area towards the dirtier area. If you clean from back to front, you're taking fecal matter and moving it towards the vaginal area, which is the um, wrong way to wipe a woman. Question 30, when caring for a client from another country, the nurse aide should be sensitive to the client's cultural needs, orient the client to the cultural practices of the facility, pr um, promote group activity par participation, and decline to care for the client. All right, and so we're talking about from another country, so we need to be mindful of the different cultures, and we're going to be sensitive to the cultural needs. And the only time the cultural needs are, you know, going to be a, a concern, uh, and if you do have a current concern, you, you refer that to the nurse, is if maybe the person wants to smoke a cigar or something. And, and I'm not sure if that's, you know, a part of any culture, just giving you an ideal, where, of course, we know that may not be part of your facility's policy or practices. So that'll be something that you actually want to refer to your nurse. But outside of that, you're going to be sensitive to their cultural needs. And if it's not hurting anybody and it's not going to, you know, cause any issues, you actually want to adhere to their cultural needs and their request, such as a diet order. Question 31, the nurse aide should provide oral hygiene to a client who is unconscious at least every two, four, six, or eight hours. And believe it or not, I know we don't see this in practice. The answer is every two hours. But let's talk about the person who's unconscious, the person who could be a mouth breather or the person who could be intubated. When those germs um, grow and accumulate and they go further down, the person can develop pneumonia. If it gets into the bloodstream, they can become septic. So it's really important for us to keep their mouth clean. However, when you are providing oral care to an unconscious person, more than likely they don't have a gag reflex. 
And so for a person who can speak to you, we normally sit them upright in a high salvage position. However, if a person is unconscious, you're going to put them in a sideline, a lateral position. That way, any secretions, because they're going to accumulate when you're cleaning their mouth with the two that any secretions that actually accumulate, they would um, go ahead and pull in the cheek area and then you can suction them out. So that's just FYI. If they're unconscious, you do not um, sit them straight up in order to clean their mouth. You're going to put them on the side. Question 32, the nurse is caring for a client who needs assistance getting out of bed to sit in a wheelchair. Which of the following actions by the nurse aide would make this a safe procedure? Place the bed in a low position. Place a pillow on the wheelchair seat. Lower both footrest pedals. Release the wheel brakes. Well, the last two options are exactly the opposite of what you should be doing. You would never release the brakes. You would actually apply the brakes before you transfer someone. You would not be lowering the footrest or the pedals. You would actually raise them. And so if you have your patient stepping over the pedals of the wheelchair in order to get into the wheelchair, that is a safety hazard. Lift the pedals. The person's path to the wheelchair should be it should not be impeded. They're not, there should not be anything blocking your patient's path. And so the last two options are not the best option. The best option is going to be the first. You want to have that bed in the lowest position before you attempt the transfer. Question 33, a visitor enters the room while the nurse aide is changing the client. How should the nurse aide respond? Can't you knock? Hi, come on in. Boy, he was dirty. Would you please wait in the lobby? And of course, we're going to respect the patient's right to privacy. And we're going to get the visitor to wait until we're done with this bath. Question 34, a client looks forward to playing bingo each morning. The nurse aide should. Tell the client that the nurse aide does not have time to get the client ready for bingo. Plan the client's schedule so the client is bathed and dressed in time for bingo. Tell the client that the nurse aide forgot about bingo, but they'll go the next day and ask the client to bathe and dress themselves. And so, um, you know, again, we talked about the quality of life and what makes these clients happy. And if this person looks forward to going to bingo as a good CNA, you're going to make sure that your client goes to bingo. So you're going to actually plan the schedule a little bit better and then help them get dressed. 35, the nurse aide is caring for a client who is confused and disoriented. The client starts begging to go home. Which of the following would be the best action for the nurse aide to take? Tell the client, this is your home. Take the client to the activity room, I guess as a form of distraction. Ask the client to tell the nurse aide about his or her home. Tell the client, we'll take you home later. You don't want to um, lie to your patients. You don't want to give false reassurance. So you want to be honest. And the, the best response right now is just to listen. And so if this person wants to go home, ask him or her to tell you about his home. Maybe there's a special blanket, a special pillow. Maybe it's something we can actually bring in from their actual home into the um, nursing home or the facility so that they would be more comfortable. Question 36, the nurse aide is caring for a client who's alert and oriented. The client touches the nurse aide inappropriately. Which of the following actions should the nurse aide take? Slap the client's hand. And I'm not going to say that's wrong. I'm just going to say it's not the right answer for this test. <laughs> Step back and ask the client not to do it again. Refuse to care for the client. Warn the client that the behavior may be punished. And so we're going to let them know that they have overstepped their boundaries and they've actually, um, you know, you're not comfortable being touched that way. So you're going to step back to protect yourself and you're going to tell the client not to do it again. And then after that, you're going to um, go ahead and tell the nurse. And when you tell the nurse, if I were the nurse, I would go in and have a conversation with that resident and let them know what, you know, what we're not going to allow in our facility. Um, and if it continues, of course, we can escalate it further. But if you don't feel comfortable at that point, maybe you can ask another CNA to go in and assist you whenever providing care. Again, you cannot delegate so you can't give your assignment to another CNA, but a good nurse would work with you to make sure that you're going to be protected whenever you take care of um, this particular client. Question 37, the nurse aide is caring for a client with Alzheimer's disease who wanders from room to room, moving the belongings of other clients to different locations. The other clients who are alert and oriented are angry that their things have been removed. The nurse aide should Return the client to the client's room and close the door. We're not going to lock somebody up who has Alzheimer's. They wonder. That's what they do. The next one is find the missing articles and return them. 
walk with the client to keep them from wondering. Uh, you're just going to be wondering with the client because that's what Alzheimer's patients do. They walk, they walk, they pace, they pace. The last one is assure the other clients that the client with Alzheimer's disease will not harm them. That would be false reassurance. Absolutely not. I don't care if the person didn't harm me. If I wake up at midnight and I see a person hovering over me, I'm <laughs> trying to steal my pillow. Uh, it may not harm me, but it would, you know, pretty much scare me a whole bunch. So we're not going to give any false reassurance. We will, however, just for the sake of this question, we're going to find the missing articles and return them. And then you're going to work with your nursing team to prevent this, you know, person from taking other people's items. Maybe we have to close the room doors when this person's out wandering. 38, which of the following is a restraint alternative? All right, so if you put a lap buddy, if you put that tray over your person's lap, that's actually considered, and they're not eating, that is considered a, tra uh, excuse me, a restraint. A sedative, well, a chemical sedative is actually a restraint. It's a chemical restraint. Pain management, I'm a little bit leery about this one, but I know that a hand mitt is also a restraint. So I'm going to go with pain management. And when you think of pain management as a CNA, you're not giving pills. So what does a CNA do to improve someone's pain? All right. So is it massage? Is it heat therapy, ice therapy? Is it range of motion? All right. So I think that would be a good alternative to a restraint. And it's the best one for this options, for these options, because everything else is actually either a physical or a chemical restraint. And we're going to see in a few moments if you're smarter than a nurse evaluator. All right, so 39, the nurse aide can provide the client with a sense of security by rushing through care, leaving the room without speaking, explaining all routines and procedures, talking to another nurse aide while providing care. The last one is just plain old rude. All right, so um, you want to explain all routines and procedures. Think about it when you go to the doctor's office, you've been waiting there for a whole hour and no one's updated you. You have a sick kid and you just just feel lesser than and like no one really cares about you. You don't want your clients and residents feeling that same way. So I want you to explain all the procedures to them um, as you're as you're going to be performing them. Question 40. The nurse aide is caring for a client with a protective device, such as a restraint. The nurse aide should assess the client once every hour. We've already discussed this. Assure the protective device is tight. Check the client's body alignment release the protective device at least once per shift. And so when it says tight, anything we put on the body, it could be an ACE bandage, it could be a gauze. We wanna make sure, excuse me, like a rolling gauze. We wanna make sure that at least two fingers can go in between the device and the actual patient's skin. And that means that the person has enough room for blood to circulate. So we're not gonna put any device on them and just make it tight. We know that we're gonna check them more than just once an hour. So the best option is going to be check the resident's body alignment. And then as far as only releasing a protective device once per shift, no, they need range of motion. And so if a person has bilateral um, hand restraints or wrist restraints, you're going to simply partially release one restraint for a few minutes, let them move around a little bit, and then you're going to restrain it again and repeat that process on the opposite side so that your patient does have movement. Question 41, the nurse aide is caring for a client with an ostomy, okay, and that's the opening where the colon is coming out the skin. The nurse aide, um, watch the nurse, excuse me, watch the nurse aide do first when changing the ostomy bag, right? Put on gloves, wash hands, explain the procedure, wash the area around the stoma. And to me, the best option is going to be explain the procedure. Because if I put on gloves and if I wash my hands and put on gloves and then explain the procedure and the patient's like, oh, no, I don't want you providing my stomach care. My wife's going to come in and do it. I just wasted time. So explain the procedure first and, of course, get the resident's permission before starting the skill. Then you can wash your hands, don gloves and wash around the stoma area. Question 42, when giving a back rub to a client, the nurse aide should use circular motions over bony areas. That one's a little bit concerning to me. Um, it didn't say red and bony areas, but you know, usually we do circular motions to improve circulation. However, when it's a bony area and if it's red and you probably don't want to be massaging that area, but I'm not going to overthink this particular one. It did not say red and Okay. And the next one is place the client in the supine position. Well, when you're trying to provide a back rub, 
Whenever you think of the supine position, take the U out. When someone's in the supine position, they're laying on their spine. So you can't provide a back rub if they're actually laying on their back. Use short, light strokes. That's not usually how we give a back rub. And then the last one says, warm the lotion in the microwave. I don't have to read anymore. <laughs> you warm lotion in your hands, not a microwave. All right, so we're gonna choose this first option. Question 43, what is the first thing a nurse aide should do when finding a client who is unresponsive? Anytime there is a change in condition, you alert others. You get a nurse in the room. However, you cannot leave the room because if you have to perform CPR or something, we need you there. So when a client is unresponsive, the first thing you do is call for help. We it won't, wouldn't be start compressions because just because someone's unresponsive does not mean they're in cardiac arrest. Your diabetic patients could be unresponsive due to low blood sugar levels. But when you call for help, you know, while you're waiting for help to come, that's when you can do your BLS assessment, your basic life support assessment, where you're tapping and you're shouting and you're checking for a pulse and breathing. And that will help you determine whether or not CPR is actually needed. 44, when operating a manual bed, the nurse aide should remember to. All right, so ladies and gents, a manual bed is an old-fashioned bed. You know, the fancy beds they have right now, um, you use a device to raise and lower the head of the bed, to raise and lower the foot of the bed, and that same controller allows you to bring the bed frame up to a working height. Uh, back in the day, <laughs> and some places still have the old-fashioned beds where there's a cranking device that allow you to crank the bed up to a working height or lower it all the way back down. The problem with that crank or that metal rod that's sticking out of the base of the bed is that it's a fall hazard. So whenever you get the bed in the desired position, you have to tuck that crank back under. All right, and so when you're operating a manual bed, what should you do? Elevate the client's head at all times. Not necessary. Lock the wheels when the cranks are folded. You're going to lock the wheels pretty much all the time unless you're moving the bed. Fold the crank under the bed. Keep the bed in a neutral position. And the best answer is going to be the third one. Um, you're going to have to make sure that crank is folded under. Question 45, the nurse aide is preparing to provide oral care to a client who is unconscious. The nurse aide should place the client in which of the following positions? And we spoke of this previously. Is it going to be supine when the late person's laying on their spine? Is it going to be lateral, which is when they're laying on their side? Is it going to be prone? They're laying on their face. Sims is a sideline position, but specifically it's the left side down. And we use that for enemas whenever the nurse is going to be giving someone an enema if they've been constipated. And so I come up to you and let's just say your name is Sarah. I say, hey, Sarah, I'm going to be giving Mr. Lucas an enema. And your question to me, Sarah, should be how long do I have? That gives you time to prepare that bed, put multiple pads on the bed. And as you're repositioning the patient, turning them from side to side, at the end, I need you to leave them on their left side. And when I come in, I'll put the right hand and the right leg up and that's going to allow me to give the enema the medication and it's going to follow the flow of the colon better if the person's on their left side. So whenever you see Sims, think of enema, think of constipation. Don't think of um, the Sims position just because it's a sideline position for someone who's unconscious and receiving oral care. All right, so the best one is going to be this lateral position, side lying, and that allows the um, fluids, the secretions to accumulate in the side of the mouth or the cheek area. Question 46, the nurse aide should place the soiled linen. Come on, we're going to keep dirty stuff with dirty stuff, so let's make sure we get this one right. On the floor, on the chair, in the dirty linen container, on the overbed table. And this was an easy one, so we're going to put it in the dirty linen container. 47, the nurse aide is caring for a client with diabetes. Which of the following would be the best for the nurse aide to use when shaving a client? All right, so a diabetic client, they sometimes have, um, they have delayed healing. So if they get a sore or something on them, it may take a while for it to heal. We want to prevent injury. And so are we going to use a safety razor, an electric razor, a disposable razor, or a straight edge razor? And what this question is trying to get you to realize is a safety razor still has a blade. We're going to avoid anything that has a blade. And so the only razor here that doesn't have a blade, it has more like a little buzz razor, is going to be that electric razor. 
Question 48, the nurse aide is caring for a client who only speaks and understands a foreign language. Which of the following actions should the nurse aide take? Use gestures, using your hands, speak slower. I hate to tell you, if they did not understand you when you were speaking a normal pace, speaking slower is not going to improve their comprehension. They speak a different language. Um, listen and say nothing. Um, if they speak a different language and you're listening, are you understanding them? Use an interpretation guide. I have no idea what an interpretation guide is. If you understand or if you want to look it up and put it in a comment area so you can educate a nurse educator so I can educate other CNAs, I greatly appreciate that. I'm going to say it's going to be using gestures, um, but we'll see if you're smarter than a nurse educator in a few moments. Question 49, the nurse aide is transferring a client to a different unit. The nurse aide should understand that the most important information needed from the nurse is the phone number to the client's room, the client's medical diagnosis, the name of the client's spouse, the name and the room number. So here's a scenario. We have a patient who's being transferred from a surgical unit and they've been doing great. They're, they're ambulatory now, but we need to transfer them to a lower level of care. And so now we're going to they need a surgical bed for a person who is going to be, you know, immediately post-op. So we have to transfer this patient to another room, maybe in the medical surgical unit. And so the only information you're going to need is the patient's name, of course, identification to make sure that we're transferring the correct patient. We're going to use those on um, two different identifiers. And then after that, you need to know the room number. Your nurse is giving the report to the, um, the nurse that's going to be receiving the patient. And I'm sure she's also notified the client's spouse of the transfer. So this is your role as the CNA, knowing the resident's name and what room number they're going to be transferred to. Question 50, the nurse aide should understand that the main purpose of continuing education is for client safety, a review of skills, facility compliance, the improvement of teamwork. All right, and so when I think of a review of skills, facility compliance, the improvement of teamwork, all of that is bundled into client safety. So when you go in and you have these in-services, when they're reviewing your skills, it's to make sure we keep our clients safe. The facility has policies in place to make sure we keep our clients safe. And if you do not communicate or work well with your team, well, then we're not going to be providing the best care. So again, I think the best answer for this one when you're doing your continuing education is for client safety. But if you think it's something else, we'll find out soon. 51 incidents, incident reports are written in order to inform the physician, notify family members, identify who's at fault, determine patterns and trends. All right. And so if you're ever written up, if there's an incident report, don't think of it as a nurse pointing her finger at you. We need to make sure that this doesn't happen to a patient again. And so this one helps us determine patterns and trends and actually helps us to develop a corrective action plan so that we can keep our residents and clients safe. 52, the nurse aide should understand that the button hook and a sock assist device are both part of what type of nursing care? Restorative and rehabilitation, activities of daily living, disability and reactivity, prosthetic mobility. So when you think of prostheses, think of something missing, think of something that needs you know, more support. And so this particular statement didn't say the person had an amputated leg. So it's not gonna be a prosthetic mobility. I don't know what the disability and reactivity part of nursing care is. Um, activities of daily living, um, that's like, you know, bathing, dressing, et cetera. But this particular button hook and a sock assist, assist device is specifically speaking about rehabilitation, okay, and restoration. And that's normally when physical therapy or occupational therapy will come in and work with the resident. And so if a person has a sock assist device, you want to um, encourage them to use that device versus you're like, oh, it just takes too much time for him or her to put their own sock on and you go and do it. You're not, you're not helping them to be independent. And when they get home, you won't be there to assist them. Them. And so these little assistive devices actually help keep your patients independent and help them be more independent when they're in their own home setting. 53, a nurse aide is preparing to ambulate a patient who is unsteady. It is best for the nurse aide to use a walker, gate belt, quad cane, or wheelchair. In my humble opinion, it's best for the nurse aide to not walk 
an unsteady person by themselves at all. <laughs> you would actually need some, you know, human assistance. However, that wasn't an option here. So I think the best option is going to be gate belt. Um, because the gate belt allows a way for you to hold on to your client and walk with them and actually hold on to them to help keep them steady and stable. Um, if you just have them use the walker, their hands may be on the walker, but if their knees buckle, that's still considered a fall. So I want to have more human assistance. And that's why I think that the second option is the best. 54, the client's bill of rights include free medical care, freedom of choice, access to the medicine cart, access to the laundry. The last two are not even necessary in your facility. They don't need access to the medicine cart and they don't need access to your laundry area. So when you think of the Bill of Rights, think about the residents who are allowed to refuse care. They're allowed to participate in care. They can tell you what they want to wear, how they want to dress. And so this allows your residents to have freedom of choice. Question 55, which of the following statements might strongly support that a client is considering suicide? And when someone's considering suicide, it's sometimes do the opposite. Like they'll get really happy and just start giving their items away. Um, so that could be a telltale sign. The first one says, I think I need to see a psychiatrist. Normally, if someone is suicidal, they're not going to be asking for a psychiatrist. I might as well be dead. That is a very good option. Um, I don't really care. We all have to go sometime. All right, and so I really don't know the answer to this one at all. I'm thinking the second one, I might as well be dead, but we'll find out. We're only a few questions away from seeing what my final score is. But if you are um, fearing that a patient might have homicidal or suicidal ideation, meaning that they may want to hurt themselves or others, you do want to ask if they have a plan. Of course, you're going to notify the nurse and you're not going to leave anything that the person could use to harm themselves or others inside of their room. You're going to take those items away and you're going to document it um, and store them with their personal belongings in a safe area. Question 56, the nurse state is caring for a client who answers every question by nodding and saying yes. Which of the following actions would be appropriate for the nurse to take? Inform the nurse of the client's behavior. I mean, is that normal? Ask a family member to translate for the client. Speak to the client with multiple medical terms. If they're not understanding the basics, don't use a whole bunch of medical lingo. They're not going to understand that either. And then lastly, shout. The fact that it says shout, I'm not even going to read any further because we don't shout at our patients or clients. And so I think the best answer would be to inform the nurse. And if you're thinking, well, why doesn't the nurse know? Because when a new person enters the room, usually it's the CNA who goes, or the patient care tech, if you're in the hospital level CNA, who goes in and who does the initial vital signs, who welcomes them to the room, who shows them how to use the call bell, et cetera. And as you're teaching them this and all they're saying is yes, 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 that poses a danger because they don't know how to use the devices. You want to let the nurse know. And if we need to get a translator or something or a family member to assist in the translation, um, we can do so. Question 57, the nurse aide gave the client the wrong diet. Which of the following actions should the nurse aide take? Report the error immediately to the nurse. Ignore the error and move, the, and move to the next task. Remove the evidence of the error. Blame another nurse aide for the error. We're going to own up to it. We're humans. We make mistakes, but we don't want to jeopardize our patients. For example, if you have a patient who has renal failure or kidney disease, um, they're supposed to be on a low potassium diet. Let's say you gave them something with a lot of potassium in it. That potassium, extra potassium can actually cause their heart to stop and they go into cardiac arrest. Um, we don't need a patient dying because you don't want to confess to the fact that you gave them the wrong tray. Um, something similar could be happening with your diabetics. If you accidentally give them a tray that has a whole bunch of sugar, well, now we're going to have to do um, the glucometer or the finger sticks more frequently. We may have to give them more insulin, but at least it'll be a lesson learned. And um, we can try to prevent that from happening again if you will report the error. 58, the nurse aide is caring for a client who has bilateral hearing aids. The nurse aide understands that if a hearing aid is not in use, it should be placed in a client's pocket. No. Be left turned on. Nope. It has a little button that you can turn it off and on if it's not in use. Um, have the battery removed. I've never done that before in my life. Um, be left on the client's bedside table. Okay. And so... 
It's either um, one of the last two options. However, when it says be left on the bedside table, it didn't say to put it in a protective, like a, we, you know, we'll usually put our hearing aids or the resident's hearing aids in a denture cup. And of course, put the lid on it, make sure it's labeled with the word dentures and also um, the, the patient's label. So we know who the, excuse me, um, hearing aids and we'll label with the word hearing aid and also put a label on it so we know who um, who that particular item belongs to. But the fourth item did not say to place it inside of a cup or anything that's going to protect the actual hearing aid. And hearing aids are expensive. So um, I'm going to go with the third option, although I don't know why a person is not wearing their hearing aids and why they would need to have the battery removed. I just know that that is not a nursing or a CNA job duty. So um, if you choose something else, we'll find out um, in a few moments whether you answered it correctly and I answered it incorrectly. 59, a family member asks a nurse aide what medication a client is receiving. The nurse aide should allow the family member to read the client's medical list. Tell the family member what medications are given. Refer the family member to the nurse. Give the family member the client's chart. Okay, so even if you know the medication and you have access to the medication list, that is not your role. You're going beyond your scope of practice. Normally, when these family members have questions about medications, they want to know indications, parameters, contraindications, what doctor ordered it. That is not your role. You're going to refer that person to the nurse and then the nurse can speak directly to them and let them know some of the higher level questions that they, um, you know, let and respond to some of the higher level questions that they may have. Question 60. The nurse says, caring for a client whose religious beliefs do not allow the client to eat certain foods. The nurse aide should report this information to the dietitian, other nurse aides, charge nurse, client's family. All right. And so I know some of you may want to report it directly to the dietitian, but the dietitian cannot take an order from a CNA. You're going to report it to the charge nurse. The charge nurse will then notify the physician, of course, talk to the patient and the family, and then talk to the physician. The physician will then change the diet order. That diet order then goes to the dietitian. And when dietary delivers the tray, Hopefully it's going to be aligned with their religious needs as far as their diets are concerned. And so you're going to report that to the charge nurse. All right, everybody, it's time for the big reveal. Let's see if you are smarter than a nurse educator. Let's see what score I made. Whew. All right, I missed one question. My final score is a 98.33. And let's review our answers. All right, so this doesn't give you a rationale. It just lets you know the correct answer. And if it's green, um, obviously it's correct. And I guess I'm looking for something that's not green and let me know that I answered it um, in, incorrectly. All right, so this is the one I answered incorrectly. It says a nurse aide is caring for a client who only speaks and understands a foreign language. Which of the following actions should the nurse aide take? And the correct answer was to use an interpretation guide. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea what that means. If you'll please do the research, add it in the comment area below. I would greatly appreciate it. Again, everybody, this is Eunice Mathis. I'm the owner of Florida Training Academy, a nurse entrepreneur who cares, and I help train some of the best CNAs in the state of Florida and right now due to YouTube around the world. So please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and refer this video to other future CNAs. I appreciate you all so much, and thank you for taking care of others. Have a great day.